Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and I thought I would do a little tutorial today on Apple's Keynote application. This is the Apple equivalent of PowerPoint, and I have been using this since 2003. I love it, and I started using it back then because it was visually superior to PowerPoint. The effects looked more natural and broadcast-like. You had really cool cross dissolves and other animation effects that you could do that just ran smoother on the Mac than they did on the PC at the time. And I was doing a lot of presentations for work and other activities, and people really noticed a difference between things that were coming off of my Mac with Keynote versus PowerPoint. And ultimately, it made the uh, presentations I was doing a lot more memorable. And Keynote has gone through a lot of iterations over the years. I think it's on version 12 right now, uh, as of yesterday. And I thought what I would do today is show you five things that I use with Keynote that I think are really cool and people may not be aware of. So we're going to step through all of them. Some of it actually involves things that you can do for video production too. So we got a lot of fun stuff to check out. So let's get to it. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is something called Magic Move. And right now on screen, I've got a rectangle and a soccer ball. Now, Keynote has some animations built in that you can do to move things around. So for example, if I wanted to move this soccer ball over to the left, I can go over to the animate function here, go on action and select move. And what I can do here is just move the soccer ball over here. And when I go and play back my presentation, you will see that soccer ball move on this particular slide. The problem is, is that when you are putting these things together, it gets really kind of complicated if you've got a lot of things to move around in one slide. So what I actually like to do instead is something called a magic move. So I'm going to jump in here and just get rid of that animation we made. And what's cool about magic move is that it will look at objects on one slide. And if those objects are on the next slide, it will animate the distance that that object would need to move between the slides. And I'll show you how this works. So what I'm going to do here is just copy and paste the slide here that uh, we have on screen. So this is the first slide and this is the second slide. And what I'm going to do here on the second slide is just move these pieces in opposite uh, directions to where they are on the first slide. Now if I play it back without magic move enabled, what's going to happen here is the uh, things are just going to jump from one to the next. But if we go in and make sure we have nothing selected on screen here, so I'm just going to click outside of the objects. If we go to animate and go to transition effect and I select magic move here, what will happen now is those pieces will automatically swap because Keynote is tracking the changes here. So let me go full screen here with this again and we'll go to the first slide and click play. And when I do that here, you can see it very smoothly moves everything over. We can adjust the length of time that this transition requires. So for example, if I wanted them to move quicker, I could make the duration one second and click preview. And you see they move a lot faster than they did before. And what I could even do here is make something larger just by creating another slide and maybe making the soccer ball larger here and maybe move it over a little bit. And what'll happen when we go from this slide to the next, let's add our magic move, is you'll see the soccer ball moving and getting larger. And this is so much easier than mapping out animations like we saw at the outset here inside of the uh, slide itself. So you just keep making new slides and moving the objects around and Keynote will automatically animate things. Here's a real world example. I do a presentation every year for my school board budget and it's often fun to talk about things like class size visually. So I've got a bunch of little people here on the screen and we need to kind of break them up into classes. And this I think looks a lot more compelling than just the bar chart. So I set up a magic move here and I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, so you can see that this is the first slide and this is the second one. And this is the third one. And we've got 38 of these little people here that we need to move around. So when I go ahead and click here, you can see that Keynote is automatically moving them around. And I don't have to spend all this time building animations. I just need to put things where I want them, and they will move automatically. This is a really cool feature of Keynote. And if you're not using it, it's going to save you a ton of time once you start. Now, if you are concerned you're going to have too many slides getting taken up on the side of your screen here, 
what you can do is organize things a bit. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'll give you my full screen here so you can see what I just did. I'm going to hold down the shift key and just select these slides that all are in common with the first one. And then if I just grab the top one here with my mouse, I'm going to hold down my mouse button here and I'm just going to move it over to the right slightly and that will organize it under this one. So I could have this entire magic move kind of bundled up. And if I want to get into it, I can just click the arrow here and make some adjustments uh, within the animation, but I don't have to worry about the sidebar here getting clogged up with a lot of duplicate frames from an animation that I'm putting together. Now the next two are kind of simple features, but are not always so visible within the keynote interface. The one I want to start with is called copy and paste style. So what I've got here is an image on screen and it's just kind of floating here in the middle of the slide. And one of the things I've always loved about Keynote is that if you go into the style section here, you can add a really cool set of borders to your image that have all sorts of different little effects to them. And it just adds a layer, I think, of professionalism that you don't have to spend so much time creating. So the one I like to use a lot is this one where we've got a nice frame with a little drop shadow there. I could even add a reflection here, which will reflect it off the uh, bottom of the slide here. But you saw there was a bunch of clicks involved in getting this set up. But what I did here is I added the copy style button to my taskbar, and I'll show you how to add it in a second. And when I click that, I can go down to another slide here, and rather than go through that process of selecting the frame and everything else, I can just click on paste style and that will automatically copy the properties from the other image onto this one. And this works for text, for colors of things. So anything that you have kind of formatted, you can copy and paste the style, but not the object itself. So you can keep two separate objects, but change how they look on the screen just by selecting that. Now, you're not going to see this copy and paste style here by default. So what you have to do to get it there is just click on an empty area of the taskbar here and then do a right click. And of course on the Mac, that means pushing down with two fingers and go over to customize toolbar. And then you're going to get this menu of features that you can then drag over into your taskbar here to customize it. And that is where copy and paste style live right now, which is a shame because it's such a great feature. Another one that we're gonna look at next is the instant alpha which you'll also find inside of this customization menu. Now what Instant Alpha does is it cuts an object out of its background. So for example, on screen right here, we've got an image of a MacBook Pro that I grabbed on Amazon. And as you'll see on the sides here, we have a white background, but I don't want to show the background. I only want to show the computer's outline. So what we're going to do here is go over to Alpha and if I just click and drag, you'll see that it's grabbing all of the white area and knocking it out. And when I click done here, that is now a transparent image. And let me just undo it so you can see it again here closer up. So I'm going to click on alpha and I'm going to hold the button down and then just drag it and that will get rid of it. This works good for solid colors. Uh, at the moment, there's no fancy AI to pull a person out of a busy background, for example. You'll probably need to use some other software for that. Uh, Pixelmator Pro is something I use to get that to work. But for simple images like this one, especially for a lot of the things that I do, Instant Alpha is one of my key go-to features in Keynote because it's so quick and easy to get these things knocked out from their background. Now, this next feature is really cool, and this is the ability to add live video sources directly into your keynote presentation. So you can add a webcam if you want. You can add your phone if you want, the actual screen image of your phone. And if you have a USB video capture device that outputs its video like a webcam, that would work as well. So if you have one of those ATEM mini video switchers, for example, that uh, should work here. Now, what we're gonna do is add two video sources to our demo presentation here. And I'm gonna go up to the media menu, and this is typically where you would add a photo or an image gallery or a video file. But if you go over here to live video, what I can do is click that, and by default, it's gonna pull in the camera from my MacBook here. So you can see that's what it's given me. 
Of course, I am totally off to the side here, but you do have some ability to format this. So for example, I can paste the style in from those images we worked on earlier, which I think is really neat. Uh, the other thing I can do here is create a custom mask, and I'm doing that by clicking on the object, going over to Format, and then to Live Video. And if I select the custom mask here, I can basically make this a little smaller. And if I uh, jump into the scaling option, I can zoom things in a little bit here and get me into a square, which I think is neat. So it's doing a little bit of scaling and some cropping, and I can get things positioned the way I want. Now, you'll notice that I'm leaving some room, and that's because I have my iPhone plugged in with a lightning cable into my Mac, and I can add this iPhone screen as a source if I have it plugged in. So check this out. I can go over to that media option again. I can go over to live video, and as you can see here, it defaults to a second version of my webcam, but if we go back into that format live video section that we were in before, I can go over here and add another live video source. I'm going to call this one iPhone, and I'm going to select my iPhone. And it's going to, uh, first of all, make sure that you are unlocked. So if your phone is locked, it won't work, but once you unlock it, you are good to go. And as you can see, we've got the image of my iPhone on screen here. I'm going to click Add, and now I have my iPhone screen here inside of a keynote presentation, and if I had to demo an app, how great is this? Because now I can demo this app uh, right within my keynote presentation. And I think it's totally neat that you can do this kind of stuff. And this, I think, makes it a lot easier if you're trying to present an app, for example, because now you don't have to leave the keynote presentation and then futz around with technical stuff to get your iPhone up on the screen. Now it can embed directly uh, into the presentation file, which I think is awesome. Now I'm going to save this real quick, and what I'm going to do is quit Keynote, and we're going to reopen it, because when you load up that presentation file again, you do need to get the video sources reconnected before you jump in. So as you can see here, both are currently off. It's telling me I have live video, so I'm going to click on Manage here and just turn them both back on. And so before you start your presentation, you're going to want to make sure you've got everything working here so you don't find yourself uh, with two blank images on screen. But I'm going to move this slide down here, and we'll just kind of replicate a presentation. So right now, those video sources are coming in to Keynote, but they're not visible because that slide isn't up yet. So as I go to the next slide, we see the picture here that we were working on before. And then if I go into my live video slide, here we are. So once you get it set up before you start, you should be in good shape. And of course, you can do all this stuff. And I think one of the nice things about connecting the phone via a cable is that you can be sure that it's going to work. There's no Wi-Fi pairing up or anything else, no Bluetooth to get messed up. It is a direct hardwired connection here. And I think that was a good choice on Apple to ensure that it will work when you're up on stage. Now, my last tip here involves using Keynote as a means of generating graphics for your video productions. And what we're going to look at here is an example of making a lower third image. And what these typically are used for in a video is to identify the person on screen. So if I hit play here, you can see I've got the name popping up along with the logo for my YouTube channel. And what I'm going to do here is just change this to my daughter's name because we're going to work on an iMovie project with Ellie in it. And I want to identify her in the video. So I'm just going to save it here, click play, and just make sure it's working the way I want. So you can see we've got a little animation here. The uh, blue part slides up and the letters slide in. Uh, the blue part here is slightly uh, transparent. We have it set to an 85% transparency. And this is all going to become very important in a minute when we drop this into iMovie. But before we do that, what I want to make sure is that our background here is transparent. So I'm going to click on the black area on screen. I'm going to go over to Format. Let me pull it back up again. I'm going to go over to Format, and I'm going to make sure that my background has no fill. And so although it looks black on the screen, when we export a video file from Keynote, it is going to have that black area be a transparent 
alpha channels. So if I go up to file here and go to export, we're going to go over to movie. And if I select ProRes 444 and make sure that we export with transparent backgrounds. So if I click export now, it's going to output a video file where that animation plays out based on the settings that I established inside of Keynote. And once that file is created, I can grab it here and just drop it into an iMovie project, for example. Let me go full screen here so we can get a better look at it. And check it out as I play things back here. Ellie's lower third appears and we have that background knocked out. And also check this out. Let's go into the midpoint here. You can see that the blue area is partially transparent because we had set that at an 85% opacity setting. So you can really put together some really interesting and unique graphics for your video projects utilizing your keynote skills and set your videos apart a little bit because oftentimes, and I'm just as guilty of this as everyone else, is that we go into whatever our software has built in for these graphics and you start seeing on YouTube, everybody's graphics look the same. But because Keynote is so easy, once you master basic Keynote techniques, you can start making video images in that way. So you could have a magic move thing going in addition to these lower thirds going on here and integrate them into your video projects without a lot of friction. And this is another powerful feature that has been built into Keynote for some time. Now, this was buggy uh, just recently on the MacBook Pros, and the recent patches to both Keynote and Mac OS X have fixed it. For a while, when you did this export, it wasn't giving you the transparency, but it just got fixed as of last week, and that's why I'm doing this video today. I was so excited to see this return because I do use this quite a bit when I'm working on a special project. So hopefully you found this video interesting. Keynote has been around for a really long time, as I mentioned, since 2003. There's a lot of depth to it, and unfortunately, a lot of these features don't always bubble up to the top right away for the user. Now, Keynote is free if you have a Mac. If you have an iCloud account, they actually have a web version of this that you can use for editing your presentations. It's pretty close to what you get on desktop, but not quite all the way there. It also runs on iPhone and iPad. It's free across all those platforms. And most of the features do work on the mobile side. Even the live video works, but on the iPad and iPhone, you only get one video source, which is the built-in camera. So there are some things that you'll see not always working between platforms. I found the Mac to be the best way to run a Keynote presentation, so I'm usually on my Mac when I am doing this sort of thing. I use Keynote every single day uh, for my class, for the YouTube channel, for the things I do around town on the school board, and it's something that is just an awesome tool and something that I'm always learning new things about. And that's why I wanted to do this video today to share some of those things with you. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman, Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.